Nuts are one of America's favorite snacks. Cashews, almonds, and peanuts are all very popular. But when it comes to health benefits, versatility, and great flavor, it's hard to beat the walnut. Whether used in baking, in a cereal or trail mix, or just eaten alone, walnuts are a great choice. Hi, Alexi here from Opto22. Today, I'm in Northern California, where close to 99% of the U.S. walnut crop is grown. I want to see just what it takes to produce these very healthy and very tasty walnuts. Given the vast quantities of nuts involved, it's important that the processing be fast, cost-effective, and energy efficient, because wasting energy is bad for the environment and bad for the bottom line. And of course, food safety is of utmost concern. Let's take a look and see how these walnuts are processed. I'm here today with Chris Fedora. Can you give us a little background about Fedora Farms? We are a fifth generation farm. Uh, in fact, we started out by my great great grandparents uh, in the early, early to mid 1800s. Uh, it was a full fledged dairy. And then in the 1940s or so, they planted a few walnut trees as kind of an experiment. And we slowly converted over to a uh, full operation walnut hauling and drying. Can you walk us through the process? Um, you look at a tree, the, the walnuts are ready to go. What happens next? We'll bring in a shaker, which actually grabs a hold of the tree uh, and shakes the tree violently, and all the nuts will fall down. Uh, we'll use then a sweeper, which will blow the walnuts away from the berm, as well as move them into a windrow. And then we'll have a harvester that comes through, picks those up, we'll transfer those into a set of trailers, and we'll take those into the hauling plant. A few years ago, the total crop estimate for walnuts was about 200 to 250,000 tons. This year, we are projected to be well over 500,000 tons. So without the technology, it would be nearly impossible to run that volume of product that efficiently in the same window. How do you ensure that your walnuts are of the highest quality possible? Quality is the most important. Because we are paid on our grade, we have to ensure that there aren't shell defects, that the meat kernel has good color uh, as well as size. But more importantly, on the moisture side, if we don't get the walnuts dry below 8%, we start running into mold and mildew issues. By monitoring the moisture of those bins and having the automated door controls, it allows us to only dry what we need to dry. Once we hit that 8%, we're able to shut that off and ship it right away, which frees up more dryer space. So we're using the technology to ensure that we're getting our maximum weight, that we're delivering the maximum amount of product so we can get the maximum amount of return. Walnuts need to be dried to roughly 8% moisture content. Why is this drying important? Drying walnuts is very important because any agricultural product, if it has excessive moisture in it, will in fact be subject to mold. Once we get a walnut below about 8%, it is definitely well below the mold point. It will keep at that point and be a healthy, uh, a good to eat product without refrigeration. Tell us about your instrumentation. Why was it such an improvement? The instrumentation that I developed for walnut growers used an existing, a known technique of monitoring the dielectric constant of a product to determine its moisture content. What I did that was unique was to adapt that process so that we could measure from a few hundred pounds to a few tons of walnuts all at once. We have a proprietary set of radio frequency circuit boards that monitor the moisture content in a large number of bins. We have our own scanners that collect moisture information from every bin. We collect that data and send all of it to a PC for display so that the operator can know exactly how the drying process is progressing. Under drying is bad because the walnuts can rot or mold, but over drying is possibly even worse for the walnut growers. Why is over drying such a problem? The farmer gets paid for the delivered weight. If they dry them from 8%, the recommended value, to 6%, they've just given away 2% of their total income for the year and reduced weight. That's a big cost. In addition, the drying process slows down. So drying from the 8% to 6 or 5, they may spend 20 or 30% too long in the drying bins. That means the grower is paying for 20 to 30% too much power and fuel, and they can't turn those bins over. We realized that our customers really needed us to help automate the process, to reduce the amount of labor, and to make it possible for them to stop the drying at the right moisture. At that point, we began to use Opto-22 equipment. 
We're using Optomux um, E1s and snap pack equipment from Opto to open and close the air doors under each bin, to start and stop drying at the correct time, to turn off the fans and burners when they're no longer needed. We've helped the industry to dramatically reduce their energy consumption. We hope that we'll be able to bring it down to where they'll be using in just a few more years less than half the energy that they were using back in the 1970s. One of the things that sets Fedora Farms apart from everybody else is we are embracing technology. We're using what is available to make us more efficient. We're using what is available to make us more consistent. There are very few, if any, haulers out there besides us that are using the auto-fill door controls, the automated drying with the lot tracking software, and the sorters that are being provided through WECO. The most important uh, a criteria for us in selecting automation equipment are reliability, cost-effectiveness, and long-term support. I have customers who are still using the Opto 22 equipment that I installed more than 25 years ago. It's still running their plants and facilities. On those rare occasions when I have to supply them with spare parts, all of those parts and boards and relays are still available. I can still get support. I can still download documentation. I can still download the software. Be sure to visit Opto22.com for more case study videos. We'll see you next time.